All right, good morning. Another Friday, another Weekend Roundup video uh, that you've all come to look forward to and plan your week around. Uh, so we have a special guest this morning. Uh, Father Schneier is manning the camera. He'll be in front of it soon enough. Uh, but in the meantime, John and Anna, our uh, chairs for the ACA, uh, the Annual Catholic Appeal, are with us this morning just to fill us in on what's going on this year for the ACA. Last year, uh, they appeared virtually in a video from the Adoration Chapel. Uh, this year, you may even be able to see them in person when you come to pick up your pledge cards. So, speaking of pledge cards, uh, Anna, you want to tell us a little bit about how that's going to work this year? Sure. So, uh, the very first weekend, which is April 17th and 18th, we're going to have all of the pledge cards displayed in the lower church hall. So, it'll look very much like it has in the past years, except for 2020. And um, you come on down. If you have not received your pledge card, they did mail them all out um, this year. So, you might have already received it in the mail, and you might have already filled it out and uh, sent it back in. And if you did, thank you. But if not, come on down, see us. We'll be there after the 5 o'clock, uh, 7.30, 8.45, 10.30, and 12.15 masses. Um, and then the next two weekends will be set up in the library, so you can come see us in the library after that. Great. Yeah, it's gone smoothly uh, in the past, so I know it'll continue that way. Uh, I think with last year's events, uh, many people started switching over to paying online. Um, so however it works, uh, we just would like to hear from you. Even if you say, hey, this year I can't uh, give a pledge, just indicate that so we, we can kind of not worry about having to follow up with you. Our goal this year is $302,624. Uh, we exceeded our goal last year, and I hope that we can continue to exceed our goal as we have many years in the past. Uh, so we thank you in advance for your generosity. And uh, this, these funds go all over the diocese. They help Catholic and non-Catholic alike. And most years we benefit in many ways as well through scholarships, uh, through grants that help our maintenance projects, and, and so many other ministries that can't be measured in dollars and cents. So we really do appreciate your support continually. And even these little things uh, help uh, John and Anna from getting gray hair. You know, like yeah. when you <laughs> sign your pledge card. More, uh, more gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before, uh, the, you know, we have three weeks to do this. So even if you just take a few minutes, it's super helpful to us and helps us know where everybody stands. Anything else you guys want to share? Uh, the theme yeah. or? I yeah, the remember. theme is um, Thy Will, will Be, be Done. done. And so, we will be is that my after. will, like the pastor's will, or yeah. is it God's? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Maybe Father Schneier's will. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the next three weeks will be will be uh, downstairs next week, and we'll upstairs the two weeks after that. Yep, then. in the library. So. so thanks, and thanks for our, everybody who uh, continuous support. Yeah, and last year it was amazing that we met the goal with all of the hardships mm -hmm. that we faced. So we appreciate all that you do. Right. Yeah, and if you're looking for any other inspiration, I know this is Father Schneier behind the camera here. Uh, I've already made my pledge. Uh, they go to the priests first, so mm -hmm. uh, all the priests have already made their pledges. So uh, uh, we hope you can join us as well in supporting the great work of so many people here in the Archdiocese. Yeah, and if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please contact the office, and if we don't have an answer, we'll find one quickly and get back to you. So I think that's good. Thanks for your help and, yeah, and for helping us out on the parish level. Thanks they for letting us be a part right. of your broadcast. <laughs> You're our first guest. Thanks for uh, awesome. Yeah. awesome. It's the hottest ticket in town. <laughs> Thank All right. you. We'll let you, you guys, guys get on with Appreciate your day. it. Thank you. You bet. I'll yeah. take that box. We'll see you this weekend. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Fun to have guests. Yeah, it is. Very fun to have guests here on Weekend Roundup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we should do that more we often. We should. Yeah. That, that could be kind of fun. Talk show-esque. Yeah, if you have suggestions, uh, maybe you can let us know who would be some uh, people we should interview or, uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be good. That could be yeah. that, could, mm. that could be dangerous, but it could be good. That. could also be good. All right, so uh, Easter and Holy Week went uh, wonderfully. Uh, so, so great. Uh, very grateful to all the volunteers, the ministers, musicians, all those who decorated the church. Uh, so many people, hospitality. Uh, that helped support us uh, as priests and clergy in our praying with you and, and making the church a place that was safe and, and spiritually. Yeah, I think it went about as smoothly as you could possibly have imagined for yeah. our first Easter um, yeah, yeah. after all this. So. And I mean, not that we always have to worry about the after effects, but once again, it's we've gotten no calls about people yeah. being sick or 
Um, so I really do think we're turning a corner and that everything we try to do and follow here in church keeps people safe uh, even as we pray. So yeah. great news. So we have some people that came into the yes, church. Yes, we do. Uh, so yeah. welcome to the Catholic Church. Scott it's McClellan. Yeah, it's a little bit more crowded. Yeah, yeah. More crowded. Uh, mm-hmm. Scott McClellan, Roy Ivey, Katie Moore, Quinton Sibelia, who was baptized as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Adewunmi. Sorry if I butchered that name. And then Aiden Schrumpf. Um, so congratulations to all of you. Uh, and welcome to our parish community. And uh, if anyone sees any of our, our RCIA folks who came into the church, give them a good welcome and a congratulations. Uh, being a Catholic means being a part of a family and uh, being brought into that family through on the Easter vigil is a, is a great experience. And I think it's wonderful when we as a whole church parish family support and uplift those who have recently entered into our community. So, you know, it would make them feel welcome if what? they got an ACA card. If they got an ACA card. <laughs> Maybe we should check. A couple of those guys are in eighth grade. Well, that's true. Yeah, but they could, they could cut some grass or something. I don't cut know. a little grass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lawns, we should say. Lawns. lawns yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Divine Mercy Sunday is this weekend. Uh, it ha- the Divine Mercy is flowing all weekend, but we have a special celebration of it starting here at 1215. We'll. Uh, have Mass uh, with the image of Divine Mercy in the sanctuary, and we'll end with um, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and roll right into an hour and a half of confessions. Yeah. Uh, so it's really a beautiful celebration uh, instituted by John Paul II, but of course the Church and Jesus have been merciful for longer than 20 years. But, yes. <laughs> uh, we live in a world now that's kind of harsh and angry and bitter and vindictive, and I think the Holy Father wisely, St. John Paul II, realized we that church really needs to emphasize mercy right now because there's a lot of wounded people in the world, and that woundedness starts reaching out and hurting other people. Yeah. So, uh, you are a sinner. I am a sinner. We're all sinners. Yes. Come receive mercy, uh, if, especially if you haven't been to the sacrament in a while. Um, and we'll be nice, we promise. Yeah, we do. We do promise that. Mm-hmm. Um uh, some of the new, at least, for our 12.15 and 6 p.m. Masses, uh, trying to make it a little bit easier for folks to get the readings and the music for Mass. So at our 12.15 and 6 p.m. Masses, we're going to have these, I guess, posters or mm-hmm. signs up uh, for a QR code. And just scan the QR code with your phone, uh, and you'll get the readings and the songs for the Mass on your phone. Uh, we prefer not to print programs and have the mm-hmm. giant slideshows. Uh, this is a little bit of an easier way for us to do that. So if you're coming to the 12.15 or 6 p.m. Masses starting this weekend, uh, scan the QR code with your phone and you'll have the readings and the songs for Mass right there with you in your pew. It's really, really convenient. Uh, you don't need a separate app. You just use yeah. the, like a camera. Yes, yeah, put it uh, on your camera. Yeah, just like you're taking a picture, it'll kind of find it and say, do you want to download this program? Yes. Yep. And then it, every week it will be updated with different songs, uh, the readings. And for the, uh, the plan is for the 5 p.m., 845 and 1030 masses, it will just have a simple um, message with all of the numbers in the hymnal that you can find uh, the songs because yeah. we we kind of assume if you're doing it for the songs you probably have the hymnal which means you have the readings in there yeah um, so anyway it's a way for us not to have tons of paper floating around the church people touching things and uh, and those that don't need it continue praying as you have um, but sometimes that projector and screen can get a little um, distracting distracting maybe. yeah and it also requires having someone to work it all the time every mass yeah uh, which is not easy especially as we move into summer and people go on vacation. Um, so, yeah, I think it's easy. If you have yeah. any questions, though, um, ask one of us, and we'll try our best to help you. Probably don't ask Father Sullivan because uh, <laughs> he still does not have a phone. Uh, but yeah. someone else will be able to help you yeah, out. we'll be able to help you out. Uh, and then we also have the Men's Axe Retreat coming up uh, April 29th to May 2nd. We'll have a speaker uh, at the beginning of all of our Masses this weekend talking about the Men's Axe Retreat. Hopefully we can get more guys to sign up. Uh, it's a really wonderful weekend uh, of prayer and of fellowship. Um, yeah, I, I helped that. We both helped out with the Women's Axe Retreat mm-hmm. about a month ago, and it went very well. So uh, happy to do that for uh, the men of our parish, too. Yeah, and I think every weekend, er, after every retreat, you know, people come back, guys and ladies, and just saying, I'm so glad I did this. But if you would have talked to them before the retreat, they'd be saying, I don't know how I can get away. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Uh, there are a lot of doubts, and if you're on the fence, 
honestly, give God the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, come on retreat. Uh, I just really, really don't run into people that regret ever doing it. It's just getting past that point of, should I go? Can I justify being gone for three days? Um, you won't regret it. So yeah. uh, please consider signing up. All right. Uh, we also pray for the repose of the soul of Alberta Long of our parish who passed away last week. So we pray for her and all those who have died uh, in the last couple weeks or so. All right. Readings. Readings this weekend. Uh, Doubting Thomas. Mm. It's an mm-hmm. Easter classic. Yes, uh, it is. It's an Easter classic. I'm probably, um, I don't know, I, I've changed my idea at least of what I'm going to preach on. I was originally going to talk about the idea of doubt and just how faith is reasonable, but I've kind of changed over to the idea of talking about why the disciples were fearful and how Christ came to give them peace. Uh, Peace be with you was the first words that Jesus spoke to his disciples after the resurrection uh, in both of the uh, apparitions that are recounted in the gospel. The first one that Thomas wasn't at and the second one that Thomas was present for. And I think just in our world, we have a lot of anxiety that we walk around with so much. And Christ comes to give us peace. Uh, it doesn't mean we're not going to experience difficult times, but with Christ, we have very little to fear. Um, and so Jesus came to dispel the fear of the disciples who were locked away in the upper room um, and, g- and gave them his peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, sometimes we think that Jesus was saying, hey, put your hands in my wounds uh, because I'm not a ghost, which I think that was probably part of it. But I think part of it was also, hey, look at the worst. You saw me on the cross, or you knew I was emptied of every drop of my blood, and that could not defeat me. And kind of speaking yeah. to your point of, if that can't if that can't defeat our Lord, the the torture of the cross, then what are the problems maybe today that you and I are going through that we think are too much or too overwhelming or too powerful? We need to kind of put our hand our hands in His wounds and realize. Those problems cannot be cannot yeah, defeat perspective. God. Yeah, um, I I'm kind of struggling this weekend uh, on what to preach. It feels kind of like uh, with divine mercy trying to combine the ocean into a bottle, you know, uh, <laughs> and it's just not possible. Um, I've been spending a lot of time on the road the last this past week, just a lot of driving, and just really amazed at how aggressive and angry in general people are on the road. It's really odd. Um, So I've been thinking about that and and maybe talking, trying to weave something in there of my own experience. Um, But also the first reading is pretty interesting. I think as we, in our world, as there's more maybe calls for a sort of communist uh, way of living, uh, it talks about the apostles, how everyone gave their property to help those in need. Um, That's not communist. The, The early church was not saying, hey, everyone needs to give up their property and support everybody else. Um, really what they, each individual had to decide what they wanted to give. And really the message for you and me isn't give everything you have. Uh, it's not yours anymore. It is none of us can be indifferent. Yeah. You know, and, and I Solidarity. Think that, yeah, I think sometimes we we see so many problems in the world and we just think I can't do anything so I'm not going to do anything. Or we come up with excuses for uh, why that person doesn't deserve help because they're an addict or they're just going to abuse the help I give them. Uh, that's not an excuse not to help them. It doesn't mean you give them what they want, uh, but it does mean you have an obligation. If you see someone in need, we all have an obligation to do something. Right. Um, so I think that's just something, once again, that we have to reflect on because it's easy to get cynical in our world. Um, and it's also easy to kind of build a little, a little bunker around our heart and around our giving. And only those most perfect people uh, qualify for assistance. The early, early church shows us everyone had this spirit about them that it's God's blessed me. Now I need to be a blessing to others. Um, so anyway, I don't know if I'll preach on that, but it, it, it is something I think that you and I over and over again as Americans, we're so blessed. Uh, and we just, we have to be thinking how we can bless the lives of others, even if it's not materially, uh, maybe spiritually, but we can't be stingy. Yeah. It's good. And speaking of bunkers around our hearts, it's it's the Masters weekend. One of my favorite weekends. Oh, of the year, yeah, so. that kind of bunker. Uh, yeah, that kind of bunker too. So you're going to be uh, preaching like two minutes. Um. On- well, 
I mean, I'll, I'll be in the confessional during okay, the final round, right. doing my priestly so duty. So please don't ruin it. Uh, either in on the on Sunday afternoon or at six p.m. mass, which <laughs> I also have to be right when the winner is being crowned and slipping on a green jacket. But please don't spoil it. <laughs> but you got God gave you good things. You got to go to opening day. Right? Yes, that was amazing. That was uh-huh. absolutely amazing yesterday to go to a ball game with my dad. So. Uh, and a great game too. My goodness, that was a great home run by Arenado in the eighth. So, great. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been so the Cardinals it's a good week. scored more touchdowns than the, uh, the Brewers. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Well, we hope you have a great week. Uh, continue your celebration of Easter, especially in this octave. Uh, normally, you'd maybe abstain from meat today, but it's during the octave. Not uh, today. Party like a Christian. Feast with the church. <laughs> there you go. All right. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless.